Hi guys, so I'm doing my little update for you all. I started Shadow Academy, which is the first book in the Young Jedi Knights series by Kevin J. Anderson and Rebecca Moesta. I'm a little over halfway through the book now and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's very simple and it's a nice light read, which I'm really glad for after the past couple books I've read. So I'm enjoying this and I don't really have a lot to say about it because I've made a lot of slow progress. So we'll see you guys again soon. I am currently done with The Bellmaker. I finished this and I enjoy this one. This is probably one of my the ones that I enjoy more of the series. There's just a lot of really cool interactions and, and personalities and stuff in this book and my thoughts are not coming to me for what I wanted to say about this book so I'm gonna leave it there. I am currently on chapter two of book six of The Lord of the Rings which is the basically the second half of Return of the King. And I haven't really made any progress through this book because largely due to the fact that I haven't had time to physically read and when I do, I don't read. I'm bored. Um, the other book that I have finished so far is book two of the How to Train a Dragon series, which is How to Be a Pirate, I believe, by Cressida Cowell. And yeah, that one was really, that was fun. It wasn't, it wasn't anything spectacular. It was just a fun dragon book, um, middle grade. So easy to read, but it's fun to read. I think that is it. We will see you guys next time. Hi guys. So I want to do my update for you. I finished Shadow Academy, the first book in the Young Jedi Knights series, and I really liked it. I want to read the second one. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. It was a middle grade and I liked the pace of it and it really didn't drag on and I really appreciated that. It was really cool learning a little bit about certain characters that I've heard of, especially since this is Legends, hearing about characters and places that I haven't heard about previously or just didn't know a lot about. I enjoyed reading this and I want to read the second book in the series. And then I decided to start Dust by Cara Swanson and I'm about halfway through, a little over halfway through, and I love it. Guys, it's so, so good. And honestly, I'm just so happy because this it's been so long since I picked up a book and just enjoyed it. Wanted to come back and read more because the book was drawing me in because it was a good book and it was intriguing to me and it was well written. And Dust is hitting all of those things right now and I'm so excited. It pulled a trope that I don't usually like, but it can be done well it, it can be done well and I know that's personally a trope I don't like so I'm gonna see where it goes with it but oh I'm just enjoying it so so much um I had a huge phase with fairies as a young young child and the Disney fairies are mostly what I read about and watched I watched the movies I read all the Disney books I could get my hands on you know they were kind of kind of a little bit of a fandom for me um, and then I haven't actually read Peter Pan, and that's something that's moving really high on, my, or it's being moved to a really high priority on my list because of dust. So, guys, it's not over yet, and I don't think I'm going to be disappointed. I'm so excited to keep reading this one. And that's all I have for you today. Okay, so since last time we talked, I have done a fair amount of listening to audiobooks. I read two novellas and have started a new story. So the two novellas that I read were Infinity Blade Awakening and Infinity Blade Redemption by Brandon Sanderson. These two novellas are set in the world of the Infinity Blade games, which are mobile games that were made in 2010-ish. And they were super well received. Lots of people loved them. And so to fill in the gaps between Infinity Blade 1 and Infinity Blade 2, and then Infinity Blade 2 and Infinity Blade 3, they had Brandon Sanderson write some novellas to basically flesh out the world and the story and give a better understanding of what that uh, story and world was. So I read those. They've been on my list to read for a very long time and I was super excited to read them and I found them on Overdrive so I was like, this is perfect. I needed something new to read and I love Brandon Sanderson so I read them and they were really good. It was super cool seeing how much he built on the world, how basically seeing that world that I knew from the games but had never really delved into very much, seeing how it worked and how the magic system worked and how 
he developed these characters and stories that were really just briefly touched on in the book or in the games. So that was super cool to see. I really enjoyed those. If you haven't played the the Infinity Blade games aren't available on mobile devices anymore, at least not on Apple devices. They might be on others, but I don't know. It's unfortunate, but it's the way things are and I but I still re really wanted to read the books. So I read the listen to the books and I very much enjoyed them. The other audiobook that I started is the uh, the Hounds of Baskerville, the Hound of Baskervilles. I don't know, The Hound of Baskerville, um, the Sherlock Holmes story. And I, it started out and I was kind of bored by it. I also, cause I wasn't really in the mood to listen to a Sherlock Holmes story, but it was something that was available and it was something that was quite a bit different than what I had been reading. And I didn't really want to start another red wall at the moment. So I decided to pick that up. I, I haven't really ever read Sherlock Holmes and I've always wanted to, and I love the various ad adaptations of Sherlock Holmes that are out there, most of them at least. And so this was one of those stories that I'm like, this is, I, I know this story and I want to read this book because I love this book and I love the character, or I love the story and I love the character, but I so had no, having never read Sherlock Holmes, I didn't really know what to expect. And so getting into it, starting it, it was kind of slow, kind of not what I was expecting and I wasn't really super enjoying it, but because it was an audiobook, I can just put it in my ears and listen to it while I'm going doing other stuff. So I just kept listening to it and it started to grow on me pretty quickly. And I really started enjoy and have started to enjoy seeing these characters and how these stories work. This one is almost exclu well, there's not very much Sherlock in it, I guess I should is how it should how I should word it. And that's okay. It's it's still interesting to see because at this by this point in this uh, stories, Watson has known Sherlock for so long and has started to understand how he thinks that you still see that that Sherlock Holmes process through the eyes of uh, Watson doing all the investigating. So that's pretty cool to see. I'm not. Uh, I don't remember where I'm at, but I'm not. I'm over halfway through with it. I'm not done with it yet. Um, I'm hope I'm excited to finish listening to it and I'm enjoying it now a lot more than I was before. So I'm excited to finish that up and I, I don't know what I'm going to listen to after that. As for Lord of the Rings, I am on chapter uh, chapter four of book six, which would be chapter four of the second half of Return of the King. And I am really, I, I think I've only read two chapters since we last talked, but I really, in those two chapters were really enjoyable to me. They're both Frodo and Sam chapters, and I just really love seeing their journeys and seeing the characters of each of them, because everybody who's read Lord of the Rings knows that Sam is like the main hero. He's the one who caused the quest to succeed and all that stuff. But I was specifically noticing the strength that Frodo has and the will that he has and how much the quest relied on him, not just because he's the ring bearer, but because without, without Sam or without Frodo, Sam wouldn't have had any idea of what to do. Sam would have just been a character. There's so much to Frodo that makes the quest actually happen. So it's it's super cool to see and I am considering some sort of Frodo specific video and I haven't figured out what I'm going to do. I don't think I want to do a character deep dive, but something along those lines of what I was just talking about with his character and his will and seeing who he is and what makes him just as much the hero as Sam is. So that may be coming or it may not. I don't know yet. Anyways, that is what I have read this past, read and listened to this past week, I guess. And I will talk to you guys later.